Hi, I'm Tom Berkland, author of An Introduction to the Policy Process and Professor of Public Policy at North Carolina State University. I hope you enjoy the book and I hope you find these videos useful. Well, welcome to Chapter 6 of the textbook and uh, the discussion of the agenda setting process. In this video, I want to introduce the idea of agenda setting. I want to define what an agenda is, how issues reach the agenda, and why it's important in the public policy process. As you'll see in this video and the following videos, I find the agenda setting process to be particularly fascinating. It's something I've been studying through most of my academic career. Uh, the whole idea of things getting on the agenda or being prevented from reaching the agenda sits right at the center of a lot of things we do in political science. Questions of group activity, questions of group power, uh, all of those issues come into play. I'm also interested in the role the news media play in the public policy process and agenda setting is the place where I can explore that interest as well. I really find this fascinating and I hope you do too and I think this will set you up well for future studies of the public policy process. Well welcome back and welcome to chapter 6 of my book in which I discuss the agenda setting process and its role in public policy making. This is one of my favorite things to study. I really enjoy studying agenda setting and the reason I enjoy it so much is because I'm a political scientist and because this is really where politics meets the policy process to me is in the discussion of what problems we should be paying attention to, which problems we don't need to pay attention to according to some people, and how we address problems as they emerge and as they become known to policymakers and the general public. It's a fascinating point uh, at which groups, power, ideas all come together in the policy process and it's really interesting and there's been a lot of really excellent work done on it in recent years so let's get right into it this will be the first of several videos and this first video will be an overview of the idea of agenda setting so let's just start with some definitions agenda setting is the process by which problems and alternative solutions gain or lose public and elite attention by public attention, it means the mass public, yeah, you and me. Elite pub, uh, attention, uh, the elites are the, the people that are at uh, the, the tops of federal agencies, uh, state agencies, uh, people that run uh, Congress, things like that. Agenda setting is all about gaining attention in anticipation of action on a problem that's revealed somehow in the policy process, in politics, in society that people think something should be done about. But agenda setting is also a really fierce competition. And why is that? Well, E.E. E. Schatzneider, the very famous political scientist, said the definition of the alternatives is the supreme instrument of power. And I think that's really important because the idea is if you can constrain the list of alternative solutions to a problem, then you can probably shape the kinds of policies that will be made and some solutions will be in your group's interest and some will most assuredly not be in your group's interest and you will want to work to make sure that the things you want to see get done are enacted and want to make sure that the things you don't want to see happen are not enacted and that's what happens in the agenda setting process. So what do we mean by an agenda? Well, let's start with some definitions from the dictionary. The Merriam-Webster dictionary defines it as a list or outline of things to be considered or done, like a meeting agenda, but also an underlying or often ideological plan or program like a political agenda. And you'll hear terms bandied about in politics like the radical right-wing agenda, the radical left-wing agenda. And that's not what I mean here in agenda setting, and that's not what we mean in the agenda setting literature. The Oxford English Dictionary talks about a, an agenda as a campaign program or plan of action arising from underlying principles, motivations, etc. Hence the set of underlying motives or ideals of a particular individual or group. And that's a pretty good definition because an agenda is a list of things that you want to get done and it's part of a campaign or program or plan to do certain things. But in, in our definition of the agenda setting process, in policy terms, what I mean by the agenda is the list of things being discussed and sometimes acted upon by an institution or by the news media or by the public at large. In other words, what people are thinking and are talking about now. 
So as you watch this video, ask yourself, what do you think is on the agenda now? And think about it at different levels. For example, what are they talking about in Congress? And what are they talking in, about in the executive branch, in the White House, and in the federal agencies as well? What's the news media talking about? What's the front page story? We used to think of newspapers, you know, front page stories. Now we think about the front page as the top of a website uh, or the, the top story at the top of an hour of an, an hourly news broadcast. What is CNN or Fox or the New York Times or the Washington Post talking about? Those sort of things are on the agenda. What sort of things are your state governments uh, concerned with? What sort of things are your local governments addressing? They might not be quite the same thing as what's happening at the federal government. Your local government might be dealing with a, a new uh, real estate development plan, or there might be some issues with the police that have come up in, in recent news that are, are very local. And so these agendas aren't always the same. Now, as I'm recording this, of course, COVID-19 is at the top of the agenda just about everywhere. But there's also different levels of, of issues in COVID-19, such as in local government, the issue might be, for example, you know, do we have a mask mandate? Whereas in the federal government, the issue might be, how are we going to distribute vaccines? So there's a lot of layers, even to the same topic. And of course, ask yourself also, what is in your local news media agenda? A good way to know what's going on in your community, of what people are concerned with, is look at the front page of a newspaper, either physical newspaper or the website, or what's the leading story in the news, the local news tonight. That is an example of what's on the agenda. Taken together, these are all ideas people are talking about and often are discussions of problems that government should solve or try to solve. Let's talk about different levels of the agenda because there's not just one big agenda that everything just sits in. And as political scientists, we tend to think about different levels of the agenda. And we start with the agenda universe, which is the list of all the different topics there ever could be on the agenda. And the agenda universe is just about anything anybody could bring up. But there's a difference between the, the agenda universe and the systemic agenda. The systemic agenda contains those things in the system that the system is likely to accommodate or to accept as a potential problem that government should address. So for example, an example I often use in my teaching is that in the agenda universe, one idea for dealing with income inequality and wealth inequality would be a radical redistribution of wealth along socialist or communist lines. The idea that you would, for example, and this is an extreme case, but that the government would seize the means of production, kind of like what happened in Russia and the Soviet Union in the 1920s or in China. And that's not likely to happen in the United States or other Western democracies. It's just not on the agenda. The wholesale takeover of the economy by the government. Uh, but on the systemic agenda in some countries like in Western Europe, there are some industry sectors that are really are dominated by the government. Sometimes transportation or, or uh, public utilities and things like that are, are run by the government. In the United States, we kind of have a mix. But in the United States, then, ask yourself what kinds of ideas would make it on the systemic agenda for dealing with wealth inequality, for example. Things like a more progressive tax system, for example, have found a home on the systemic agenda in the United States. Now, the goal of any group is to move an issue from the systemic agenda to the institutional agenda. What we mean by the systemic agenda is all the ideas people could be talking about. But the institutional agenda are the ideas and issues that institutions of government at the federal, state, and local levels are addressing. The goal of a group that wants to see a change is to move issues from the institutional agenda to the decision agenda, to the point at which a government body, some authoritative agency or agent makes a decision or is confronted with the opportunity to make a decision. So groups seeking policy change seek, seek to advance issues closer to the decision agenda, whereas groups that oppose change will, will seek to block issues from advancing on the agenda. And that's really important because it's important to know that the agenda setting process in the United States is not just a competition over getting your ideas on the agenda, it's keeping other ideas off the agenda. 
So for example, the National Rifle Association in the United States seeks to keep more gun control off the agenda. And in fact, after big events, and we'll talk about the notion of focusing events in a few minutes, after big events, the National Rifle Association will say you shouldn't exploit an event to get gun control on the agenda. They're trying to block it from the agenda. So how do issues reach the agenda? Well, groups react to other groups' actions or successes. So in the example of the NRA, if a gun control group says we should control guns, the NRA will say we shouldn't, and they react to their actions or their successes. The leadership in the executive or legislative branch can also put things on the agenda. And in fact, when the president puts something on the agenda, when the president pays something at, uh, attention uh, and, and highlights that as a national problem, it tends to get a lot of uh, attention. So the president has what we call the bully pulpit to focus attention on important issues. Members of Congress also, the leadership, the majority leader in the Senate, the Speaker of the House can also highlight issues and move them up the agenda. Crises and focusing events can put things on the agenda. We'll talk more about that later, but crises and focusing events are big sudden events that just kind of bowl everything over on the agenda and uh, get a lot of attention. Protest movements will put things on the agenda, things like the Me Too movement uh, that highlighted the problem that women had with sexual harassment, the Black Lives Matter movement, things like that, will also get uh, attention and space on the agenda. And then of course all of these things rely on media coverage or activity uh, before the, they rise on the agenda. And then one last uh, area in which uh, attention is generated uh, and issues moving the agenda is through indicators. Uh, indicators of problems such as numbers. A good example is the number of people that are sick with COVID. Uh, as this is being recorded, that number is going up and up and up. That uh, is an alarming number. But it, for example, what if we found that there was a, a major uptick in the number of traffic accidents or the number of crimes? Those sort of things, those numbers, those indicators of problems also move things up the agenda. And then political changes cause issues to reach the agenda. Uh, political changes like uh, the change in administration. Certain issues are going to be on the agenda in the Biden administration that wouldn't have been on the agenda in the Trump administration. And certain issues were on the Trump administration's agenda that were not in the Obama administration's agenda. So you can see how the change in political uh, party control of institutions, changes in coalitions, and things like that have an influence on public policy making. Now, I want to relate the policy and the media agendas, and this is something that I've studied and a lot of my colleagues study. And what I want to drive home is the idea that media coverage can often yield increased public concern around issues. John Kingdon said that this is really important in some domains, but uh, he says it doesn't set the agenda in some fields, that, that media coverage doesn't really matter in some areas. In his study, uh, John Kingdon, in his book, Agendas and Alternatives in Public Policies, said that in, in transportation, media coverage really wasn't that important for driving the agenda, that others were responsible for moving the agenda forward. But the media do have considerable power to set the agenda after focusing events. And I want to highlight the special role of focusing events because it's something I've studied extensively and because it really has a big impact on the agenda. Now, a focusing event is something that I define as a rare, sudden, well-known, and actually or potentially harmful event such as a big oil spill, or an earthquake, or a hurricane, or a, uh, a terrorist attack like September 11th, all those kind of events, an airplane crash, things like that, tend to induce sudden interest to issues, sudden attention to, uh, to issues, and a lot of what we call alarmed discovery. Uh, Anthony Downs, the, the uh, social scientist, said that uh, oftentimes when there's a problem, it's, it's suddenly and discovered and there's a lot of alarmed discovery, something we've got to do something about right away. And so big events get a lot of attention, but focusing events can also fade fast on the agenda. They can come and go really quickly. Now, what are some examples of focusing events 
that you can think of? What are some big events that you can think of that have stimulated agenda setting activity, that have put issues into public prominence, and that have led people to search for solutions to those problems? So there you have it, an introduction to the agenda setting process, one of the most fascinating aspects of public policy making and of politics in general. In the next video, we'll discuss how groups and power come together to influence what reaches the agenda, and perhaps more importantly, what fails to reach the agenda. Thanks for watching this video. As always, I really enjoy hearing from students and teachers about the book and about public policy. Feel free to reach out to me at tom at tomberkland.com or visit my website, tomberkland.com. Thanks again for watching.